and make some noise for the 15, 20 year vet of the gathering, the one and only up Chuck the Clown. Get up here, up Chuck. Come on, we all love to hate up Chuck, but today on the 24th annual, make some fucking noise for up Chuck. Intro. It's an honor to have this man back to the gathering. He started his own motherfucking gathering called Skank Fest. With your boy, with your boy, I had one of the best times of my motherfucking life at. And special secret announcement. Nobody knows this is happening, and it must remain top secret. Which is exactly why I'm spilling the beans here at the gathering. <laughs> ICP will be performing at Skank Fest this year, motherfuckers. <laughs> My motherfucking homeboy for real. The one and only BJ Ogunza! clown makeup out of your dick hair before you go home. <laughs> the girl sucks your dick here, your whole this area looks like a clown with a dick coming out of its mouth. Oh, there's more fucking armpit hair on girls than pussy hair here, I'm betting. Girls hate pussy hair. I love it, dude. I'm old school. Give me that big old dumb bush. I mean, stop coming down your legs or nothing, but you know. You know girls are lasering off their pussy hair now? Forever? Don't woo for that. That's a lazy answer. That's a permanent solution to a very temporary problem. Just shave your pussy hair if you want it going so bad. Don't make it permanent and forever. You want your pussy exposed in the elements for the rest of your life. Take a look at that bitch when she's 65. I'll tell you, there's no such thing as an attractive, can't grow hair, 65-year-old pussy. Get out all the elements. Looks like Thanos' chin. Just seven lines. You gonna feel which one's a pussy? Nope. Nope. Oh, there it is. How many girls out there give a bad blowjob? That's fucking impossible. That's the confidence this festival and these people have filled you with. <laughs> That's how good men are to you, ladies. No one's ever told you about your terrible blowjob. I'm sure there's some great ones in here, but I bet there's some doozies. I've seen some of the sets of teeth around this bitch. Using a broken comb. It's gonna be all raw and stingy tomorrow. You can't even touch it when you have to pee because of the salt on your fingers. I bless you. Thank you guys. I fucking love the Juggalos, man. You guys have been supporting me for years. Up. I'm making you sit on the floor. This guy must have a big dick. I'm making you sit on the floor Indian style. Is this your wife? Nice. Have you been coming to this gathering for a long time? This is your first time? How old are you? 
51? No shit. In your first gathering, have you enjoyed yourself? Did you pull your titties out? Did you do NOS with a guy 15 times your size? I'd be lying if I didn't tell you on my golf cart there's been eight times to be grabbing like titties. Oh, it's a guy. God bless your confidence. It's overwhelming. I love all of you. I'm fucking a tank top. That's how insecure I am, dude. I don't fucking... Tank top fucking all day. It covers all my problems. You can still see my fucking chest and shoulders. They're almost in shape from a lifetime of planking over women who thought I was thinner in clothes. And my right arm stronger than my left because I always balance on it. And I use my left hand to wipe sweat off my face and apologize. Sorry. Oh, shit, is that in your mouth? You a fan? What is this place? No women think they're bad at sucking dick. Ain't that a bitch? I like the reasons for why women say they're good at sucking dick. I had a woman tell me I did Burt Kreischer's cruise, and some lady on there goes, I suck the best dick. And this is her reason. She goes, because I have no bottom teeth. What? Just top teeth. The most dangerous of teeth involved in a blowjob. That's all she has left. Now featuring no governing bottom teeth to stop you from can opening off a cock like a fucking juicy juice in camp. <laughs> no bottom teeth. Don't come in her mouth and make her laugh. She's gonna shoot out like jizz for his bees. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear the no, the, the no tooth blowjob? They say that's the good one, the gummer, yeah. I've never had it. I get the concept of why it's good, but I don't think it's my jam. I know there's no teeth, so it can't hurt, but like, I'm a big texture guy, and to me, all I think about is my wiener hitting those little caverns where tooth used to be. It's like a little Ren Stimpy drawing of a nerve coming down. It's like a bunch of M's going into my dick meat. I saw a trans get beat up by security. That was dope. They were treated like a girl until it started talking. Uh, come here, miss. And she was like, lay your hands off of me. The wiener fell out of the side. It was humiliating. Well, don't get my fucking... I'm pro-trans, dude. Do your thing, man. But you gotta let me make fun of it. You're cutting your wiener off. Well, you're not. Either one's hilarious. I'm gonna laugh at you like anything else. I don't. I'm not the anti. I drank Bud Light straight through that shit. And from Bud Light, put the trans girl on the can, and everybody was mad. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Who buys beer for who's on the can? It's not Wheaties. Who gives a shit? I didn't know that. People are still drinking Bud Light. I'm gonna suck it now. So get the fuck in me. Cream pine with Bud Light. Kid Rock was mad, remember? Kid Rock shot them shits. Kid Rock bought a 30 rack of trans cans and took them in his backyard and shot them with an ape. <laughs> Why would you be that man with those tranny cans? I think he got tricked. That's what makes dudes mad. He got tricked. He came home one day. He's like, oh, hot chick on the Bud Light can. Nice. He pounded it down when he pulled the can away. A cock hit him in the face. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? I'm not homophobic. No one can be when you're here. I've seen 85 cops. This is how not homophobic I am. Everyone I walk by, I've done this. I get why he's doing that. Nobody fucking, none of the fun shit I've seen online. Dude, everybody gangbang this guy's wife real quick. Don't be pussies. But I'm not homophobic. No one here's homophobic, right? You know what's funny? I'm a big believer in gay rights, which is a lot of people don't know that. Big believer in, actually, I think gay rights is a stupid term. 
You should just be right, same rights as anybody. Who gives a fuck who you're fucking? And if I believe that, which I do, and I preach that, which I just did, why am I called a homophobe still? Just because whenever I see two guys kiss, I still go, no, stop! I know they're right and I'm wrong. That's what's important, right? I always go home like you should have done that. That's fucked up. There's two guys French on a corner. <laughs> Gay sex is so funny. But have it, but it's so funny. Who's this other guy with you randomly? And you and your wife? That's your brother? No shit? Did you bring them here or did they bring you here? You brought him here for his birthday? How old are you, dude? 27? 47, I was gonna say, you're white, your chick's 51, you creep. What is she, a teacher rapist? I'm kidding, by the way. Are there teachers here? Really? CPR class? Teaching's a noble job. What do you teach? Special needs? That's fucking sweet. I met a teacher in an audience one time, and I was like, there was a ginger dude. I was making fun of him so hard. I was giving him the biz, low-hanging fruit. And I was like, what do you do for a living, you friendly piece of shit? And he was like, I'm a teacher. And I'm like, that's so noble, dude. That's a man. I made the crowd clap for him. And I was like, what do you teach? And he was like, I teach uh, American history to special needs kids. And I was like, why? <laughs> I mean, of course you gotta teach special needs, but like functional learning, why are you gonna clog their silly brains up with a bunch of useless stable facts? Who gives a shit? It's a fun class to teach though. You can say whatever you want. Today we're gonna talk about George Washington, my father. He came to this country. Abraham Lincoln, the godfather of hip-hop. <laughs> no one gives Lincoln love in hip-hop. Yo, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I was fucking having a great... Hey, where's the Jews at? Really? What a puzzling amount. Hey, but I'm Jewish. Not religious, really, but like, I still say I'm Jewish. I'm getting, as I get older, I'm getting pretty Jewish, though. At 47, nothing to do with religion, but like, I like can feel cold weather coming in my bones, and I warn other people, I'm like, bring a sweater. I love brothy soups. I hate Nazis, I'll say that. I hate Nazis. Every single one of them. Not every one of them, that's not fair. There's one Nazi, one that I do feel bad for. The Jew number Holocaust tattoo artist. Because that wasn't why that guy got into art. You know what I mean? I bet every day that guy was like, can I do an eagle on this next guy? They're like, no, just do the fucking numbers, please. A lot of them. Doesn't always get a big laugh. <laughs> Turns out you gotta believe the Holocaust happened to laugh at that joke, so. Shame on you. Shame on you. I have a 21 year old daughter. She's shooting OnlyFans in a tent over there. <laughs> no, she's wearing makeup. So This rap festival is too white for my daughter. <laughs> I just met my daughter's first fucking boyfriend. Well, I don't know if it's her first boyfriend. It's the first one I've ever met. Six foot five. I, when she called me and told me, I was like, he's black, right? And she goes, half black and half Hispanic. And I went, both? Both things? <laughs> I bet him though, he's fucking dope. Took a six foot five black and just he slipped on it. Rules. 
He loved it. It was fucking great. Man. And now, you know, look forward to uh, some funny new bits about my black son in law. That'll be fun. Also, a black grandchild would be a pretty nice look for me, if I'm being honest. I get called racist a lot because of comedy, so a black grandchild would be a nice look for me, if I'm being completely open. I hope it's a boy with a strong black name like Germanthony or something. Like that. <laughs> All my headshots are going to be me just cornrowing his hair. We're going to take pictures of our Jordans together. I'm going to throw my alley oops. Germanthony, ho! Thanks, Pop Pop. Hey, black guys, I tell her, I don't give a shit. Go for it. As long as they're good people, who cares, man? Better than the alternative. My friend goes, don't worry about who your daughter dates. She'll be fine because girls always look for a guy that reminds them of their father. I'm like, I hope that's not true. I like to finger girls' assholes when they suck my dick. I don't want that for my, for my fucking baby angel. No. That was fine for her pig mother. That was different. I didn't get two in there, too. She didn't know the difference. One or two. Loose as a goose. Her farts never made noise, but not my baby. Plus, you ever see how long black dude fingers are? No way, Jose. You're gonna fucking scratch her trachea through her asshole. Fucking back off, brother. Just get the point out like this. It's my baby, Mr. O. I didn't want to fucking be like this. It's funny when you can wig out the fucking juggalos. It's not your fault, it's my fault. I'm very colorful with my language, so I paint a vivid picture. It gets people very emotional sometimes. It's very easy to do. Watch, watch how vivid. Hey everyone, this is Ethan. He's a cancer kid I stole from St. Jude's. I'm putting cigarettes out on his head, yeah. I'm touching his dick, he's only 10. Yeah, who's gonna believe him? Bald piece of shit, get out of here. There's no, yeah, there's no Ethan. Some people are like, Ethan. Because I asked him, Ethan, come help me! Did I just tell this? Has anybody even seen Ethan? Anybody butt here yet? Well, it is day three of the Juggalos, so whether it's butt fucking or regular fucking, it always smells like butt fucking. Who gives a shit? I talked to a couple on New Year's Eve in Pittsburgh. I asked them what they were doing to celebrate the New Year's after the show. They were married and they both said butt fucking. At the same time, like not a joke, like they both didn't know the other one was going to give the real answer. And I was like, wow, why butt fucking? Why is that the big fucking thing? And they were like, uh, because the kids are gone for the night. And I thought, stayed with me for days. I said something in the moment, moved on quick, but I don't know why that stayed with me. They're going to butt fuck because the kids are gone. It's the first thought when they were the kids are going to stay at grandma's for a night. Oh, they're going to butt fuck. Like they, it's, it's so planned. Oh, we could watch a movie and... For days, I'm like, what difference does it make if the fucking kids are home? It implies the regular fuck when the kids are home, but not butt fuck. That's curious to me. But I think I figured it out. And I think that couple might be right. Because the big fear when you're having any kind of sex when the kids are home is they're going to interrupt, right? Not they're going to come in. You'll see me lock the door, but they're going to be knocking when having a nightmare or something. And I believe if on the other side of that door you're having regular God-fearing Christ-like penis pussy sex, the way the Lord wants. Even though it's awkward when the kid comes knocking, there's still something about where you could be like, oh, okay, give me a second, I'll be right there, honey. And you can kind of snap back to being a parent. I think it is, in fact, different when on the other side of that door, where the kid's knocking, butt-fucking is taking place. <laughs> it's a different situation. you got a lot to snap out of there. Ladies, you are being somebody in that moment that you are not 99% of the time. Beside you getting butt fucked, a lot of people haven't seen that. 
That's not the person people see when you're letting someone turn in front of you with a green light in the morning. No, you go. That's not what people see when you're dropping off your kids' friends. Okay, sweetheart. Tell your mom I said hi. This is somewhat different. Face down, ass up, in your marital bed, gripping the sheets with your little mom fist. Those same sheets that just days before you checked your child's temperature with your lips on their forehead. And your husband, the man who provides for the family, comes home after a long day of work and still finds time to play with the kids. The guy who wakes up on Christmas and drinks a big old dumb cup of coffee wearing stupid pajamas and goes, aren't we the luckiest family in the world? That guy is nuts to butts up your shitter! Where poop lives! And he knows he's being rougher than he has to. He knows it hurts. He doesn't hear you say ow a lot anymore. It's different when a kid comes, not, I'm having a nightmare. I mean, that snap of reality, immediately feeling your husband get soft in your ass, which must feel terrible. Like melting turds, I would guess. And then he pulls it out soft so the head catches behind the hole and it snaps back and makes a mess. And then ladies, you gotta go read a book to a child, to a child! With God knows what combination of fluids leaking out of you. And your husband's in the bathroom flicking shit flakes out of his dick wrinkles? Nah, I think that couple's right. You wait till the kids are gone.